Hey everybody, I'm Dane Sanders. I want to welcome you to Fast Track Coaching. Uh, we've been doing this for a while now, and uh, it's been way too long uh, since having Frederick on the show, but I'll introduce you introduce you guys to Frederick Van in just a second. But uh, if you've not been on the show before and you're curious what this whole thing is about, it's basically a conversation. I have a chance to be in dialogue with some pretty amazing people, and if you want to check the popular replays, you can certainly do that. But for the better part of three years now, we've had a lot of great conversations, and they're meant to help uh, encourage you to pro push your business and your creativity forward just a little bit this week. It's not meant to solve the world's problems, but it is meant to help and help you implement in particular, and I hope today is no exception. I want to jump right into the call, though, because I'm really excited uh, to have Frederick on the show. Frederick Van, welcome to Fast Track Coaching. Hey, Dane. Thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure, man. You've actually been on one other time. You, you, you have a very prominent spot on our billboard uh, on the uh, Join the Conversation ad that we have out. And it's because oh, cool. uh, I have this kind of montage of all the different speakers. And what's amazing to me is you don't age. It's ridiculous. You look exactly <laughs> the same. And it's been like eons ago that you're on the show. So I don't know about that. Really glad you're here. Um, and uh, and I want to just, again, for folks who, who might not know who you are, I want to give people a little bit of context. Uh, you're a photographer by trade. You've been doing that for a long time. You got your start there and uh, were in the military. You had a passion for that. And then outside of that, when you came back um, to civilian life, got involved in the corporate life as a marketer with some pretty big name companies. Yep. And um, now you're kind of in the season of merging those things. Simultaneous to that, you're host of This Week in Photography. You do a lot of things, my man. I do. I and, do. I and do. I'm wondering if you could... Uh, fill in the gaps a little bit on, on a little bit of how you got to today beyond those kind of broad strokes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, you did a great job. So the, my, my background is, like you said, it's, it's military and that's sort of at my DNA level. Not so much the military piece of it, but the military photography piece of it. Yes. Um, you know, and it, I, I started in photography, you know, probably back when you were shooting, when you first started shooting, and that was like you know, with film and sort of, you know, that, that whole romanticizing of what it was to like get, your, get, the, get it right on the film or on the slide or, you know, whatever. So I, I You and Robert of, Kappa were doing a great job back then. I thought, <laughs> I thought, really thought you guys were coming, coming along. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, I mean, it was, it was that's, that's where it all started. You know, I sort of, sort of developed my love. I didn't even know I had a love for photography back then. In fact, I thought my love... I knew I had a visual sort of, I was uh, a leaning toward doing something in the visual arts, but I didn't know what it was. And back then, I thought the only the only path to doing that was to learn how to program computers to move pixels on the screen. <laughs> so in order to create art, you got to learn peaks and pokes and sprites and all this crazy stuff. So that's where I started learning on a Commodore 64, trying to learn that stuff. So, you know, fast forward to today. So I went through the military, eight years I was in doing, wow. you know, from the range of beginning photographer all the way through to combat photojournalist at the end. Um, then I got out. I separated from the military. Honorable discharge, by the uh -huh. way. So uh -huh. <laughs> I, got out, I got out of the military, and uh, it, that was around the time Silicon Valley was kicking off. So it was. So you went to war over there. I, yeah, I went to war in Silicon Valley. <laughs> totally, it was it was crazy. I came to I came to Silicon Valley when Yahoo was it was just a couple of kids, you know, Jerry Yang and David Philo building this company that no one knew what they were doing, you know. So right, and uh, that was one of the first companies I joined was Yahoo back wow. in the day. Wow. So you know, so I had a like you were saying, I've joined since then. I've worked at several really big name tech companies in the valley and throughout that journey I've learned that I love marketing too and the whole idea of communicating and persuading people to do something you know mm -hmm. generally in their best interest but persuading <laughs> persuading people to do something or take action on something yeah. so you know where I am now is just sort of melding those two things together my love for photography and photographers with my love for marketing and getting messages out to people and it's been working out so far well we'll talk a little bit about about this week in photography too I mean that's that's like a mainstay it's been around forever yeah. It seems, at least in in digital life years. Um, totally. Uh, what's your role with them, and and how did that come in? Yeah, that's interesting. So my role with with this week in photo is I'm the host of the show. So which you know equates to as you know sometimes cat herder. So I get to, <laughs> I get to play either moderator slash host slash you know pull purge pull. Uh, 
you know, hermit crab out of the shell guy. You yeah. know, that, that, that's what I do you on mean the show. Photographers are introverts sometimes, really? You, you have to, <laughs> yeah, that has to happen once in a while. You'd be surprised, if, or you, you know. wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Um, but well, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. One of my most anticipated shows this past year was I had Joey L on, and I was so excited to have this guy on. I mean, I was so inspired by his work, and, and yeah. he's, he, he is amazing. And, and it, the interview was fine, but oh my gosh, it was a different kind of interview. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, and, and every time I'm in that kind of dialogue, I'm, I'm always surprised. I don't know why I get surprised because it seems like some of the most creative are often some of the most um, rem- remarkably introverted. And shy, yeah. I yeah. mean, you like look at these celebrities. You know, Generally, they're shy. They're right. okay when you put them on stage and you wind them up and press go. <laughs> but you know, you get them off stage in their own environment, then they're shy. Yeah, I, I interviewed Joey L as well. And he was – I think – yeah, I had to. One of my, I think, hopefully, one of my skills is I'm I'm able to sort of morph into a friend with the person that I'm interviewing with, sure. and it's it's genuine. It's not right. phony. Right. Um, and with Joey, I was able to go. It was like a time machine. I was like, oh, I'm a kid again because he's right. he's generally a kid. It's like 14, you know? right? Exactly. Yeah. He's, and so I was like, <laughs> there were lots of likes and dudes and everything in the. <laughs> In the interview, but you're right. He's just amazingly talented, sickeningly so. You know, yeah. like I put on the blog post, he just, you know, it makes you just want to like, quit. Yeah, it just makes you want to go crawl into a hole and like, okay, I'm doing it all wrong. Right, right. <laughs> Wait, yeah, yeah. Well, and it's funny. And then you, I had that whole like run show that you did with Conan O'Brien recently. Mm-hmm. Just kidding. So, so if you guys don't know this, you have to go on Google Plus and, and check it out. But Conan O'Brien did this great kind of Google Plus Hangout on Air thing, and he yep. picked like five people in the planet to hang out with him, and he picked uh, Frederick to to join in. And if if you want a good hearty laugh, uh, go on. And by the way, I really thought your microphone was much nicer than his. <laughs> I, I was... I've since gotten rid of that microphone, as you can see. I have a little, uh-huh, uh-huh. a much less uh, yeah, ostentatious mic. Going well, on come on, hello, hello. I went out and bought this mic because of you. Are you kidding? Just kidding. Just kidding. I get so much. I get so much grief about that mic. People are like, you know, who do you think you are? Oh, you know? are you kidding? It's a great mic. Whatever. <laughs> I think the microphone is the new DSLR. Everyone's going to have one. That's right. You got to Yeah, cuz it makes your it makes you a better interviewer if well, you have a good knows mic. <laughs> good video is about good audio, so. Well, okay, so I want to talk to you about a bunch of things. One piece in case you guys are at home you don't know this and I don't know how you could actually know it, but way back when, if you happen to know anything about uh, my story, especially with with this fast track photographer thing, uh, do you notice how I didn't even it was a no look point. I could just do this. <laughs> That's and, awesome. That's perfect. You're like <laughs> <laughs> that well, say hello to Vanna White. You know, one one of the things you don't get enough credit for for in our little pho- photography community with, around fast track and better together is, um, I remember having this crazy idea of wanting to write a book and calling you up and us having a long conversation and you introducing me to Ted Wait. Yep. And, and it didn't end up working with Ted, but I love Ted, an incredible guy, and you'd already published with him, and yep. I think it was a Peach Pit, and yep. Um, yep. And I ended up going with Amphoto Random House, but it was it was uh, that whole process. I remember just thinking like, I can't do this. I can't do this. And yep. you are you are this optimistic, find the good thread, pull resources together kind of guy that yep. I can see why there's so many different parts of your world that are dynamic, uh, whether yeah. it be, you know, looking for the, the photograph in the context of a, a, of a gosh, a war uh, mm-hmm. or kind of some military action. And, and then from there to go to a very real but different kind of white collar war and you know marketing and big business and, and that kind of corporate life and yeah and then to find that middle space and and to get resourceful in the middle of it mm-hmm. i'm curious um as a photographer because most of the audience here are not hosting radio shows but they are trying to make a go at this photo thing yeah how do all those experiences contribute uh in a in a constructive way where you're taking skill sets from from those you know parts of your life resume and incorporating it into whether it be the craft or art of photography or even the business side of it as you're working with clients? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a great question. I think, you know, it's all one universe, right? So everything works together. And, and for me, you know, people say I'm really optimistic and really positive, and I think I am, but I think I was, it's not so much about, maybe it is optimism, I don't know, but it, it's more of I have things that I want to do. You know, there's there's not enough time in the day to get all the things that you want to get done. And along the way, as I'm trying to do these different things, like say start a business, you know, right now, or make a podcast successful, or thinking about different ways to get the word out about this product or service. Right. You know, I'm picking up little tips. Of, you know, you learn you learn along the way. Like I did a hangout yesterday on Google, um, and the guy that was talking was 
one of the lines that he said was sort of rang in my head, and he said something like, you know, he, he's a sports figure. You, you can mention who he is if you want to. Well, it's Tiger Woods, everybody. It was Tiger Woods. Woods. Yeah, it was Tiger Woods. So he did a hangout. You can search for Tiger Woods hangout online, and you'll see the interview. It's like 20 or 30 minutes long. So, But what he said was, you know, people were asking him, why do you keep going out there? You know, you seem to have lost your your – you know, your whatever that magic was that uh-huh. made you Tiger in the first place. Why do you keep doing that? And he, I think, I'm paraphrasing, but his response was, I keep going out there because I have to, you know, and I have to keep, you have to keep putting yourself out there in order to win. You know, right. the, the only way to lose is to not show up at the game. So mm-hmm. he says, I keep showing up. <laughs> you know, that's my secret. I keep showing up. You know? Well, it's his best chance of winning the next Masters is if he actually shows up at the next Masters. And if he doesn't show up, guess what? A hundred percent, you will lose. And that's yeah. the way. That's the way I approach a lot of things. Is you know, right or wrong, good or bad. You know, the the worst regret or the worst feeling for me would be regret. Like mm. when I when I become this old man, you know, walking around with my walker and get, or my riding around in my rascal in Las Vegas or something. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be like, well, I don't want to be that guy saying, hey, you know what? If I had of if I'd have invested in this company or if I had a yeah. tried to build this company, I'd yeah. be right now. I don't want to be that guy. You know, I'd rather have a string of mistakes. And a few successes behind me yeah. than, you know, a bunch of things that I could have done in the past. Yeah. Well, it, it's it's interesting you say that. I mean, it, it seems like that is the perennial conversation that I'm in with photographers all the time. Is this this sense of like, gosh, um, fear driving motivation, uh, mm-hmm. fear of success, fear of failure. Um, it, this, there's so many dynamics in play totally. and that inter- internal conversation that people are having with themselves I have with myself every day you do too of like you know should I could I will I can I what's the point will I look dumb foolish crazy yep. uh, and the answer of course is yes to all of it yeah you will right. fail you will screw it up you will look dumb sometimes you'll look like a hero sometimes when you're not really a hero yep. you know um, and when all those things but ultimately what's the narrative you want on your life mm-hmm. looking back I think it's a good prerogative, especially for folks who are listening right now going like, really, I'm not so sure. Um, is it, yeah, am I, I worth, think, am, I, am I worth betting on? I think a lot of that is, and the answer is yes, of course, but I think a lot of it is, you know, if you, if you boil it down and you look at photographers and what they're trying to do, say you, you're trying to make the leap from amateur to professional photographer and you want to start charging for your work, which means you have to position yourself in a certain way and you have to look professional in order to get work. And you have to make people think that you're a professional, right? Right. So then you, even if your work isn't up to that level yet, you still have to be that that person, which then is like this, it's almost like a, a, you know, a chemical reaction because you have to be that person. Therefore, you start posting in a certain vernacular online and you start acting a certain way and you have to sort of, you have to, you have to start talking the talk and walking the walk. But if you're not ready to talk the talk yet, then you feel nervous. Right, mm-hmm. so you feel like, oh, well, what if they find out that I'm not exactly sure how light reacts at f five six? You know, you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. so you you get shot, you know, or you get you have that inside of you, and that gets projected. And then the other piece of that is, amongst your peers, you want to appear like you are, you know, Competent. worthy of being in right. that that peer group. Yeah. So you then puff up. You do the blowfish thing a little bit and then that comes through. Right. So what I, what I suggest to a lot of people that I talk to on and offline is you know the the only way and I said this on this week in tech photo, you know they were asking me about that that kind of stuff and I said um and I think Derek's story repeated the same thing is the only way to sustain a persona online is to be yourself. That's right. You can't. You're. You're. There's only one you anyway, so you are automatically unique, right? There's only one me, you know. So, I. That's my sole advantage is there's only one me, and I can, you know, as long as I'm myself, that is my commodity. But mm-hmm. if I try to be someone else, then it becomes work because mm-hmm. now, you know, I'm maybe I'm trying to be this big, you know, whatever celebrity dude or whatever, and now I'm at a trade show and people are saying, hey, there's Frederick. I want to go talk to him. Now I got to be that guy. You yeah. know, I got, you know, I was like, listen, I just want to go back to my room because I want to relax. If I'm just me, then it's just me hanging out. You know, yeah. hey, let's go have a drink. You know, it's just normal. So I would suggest to folks out there, you know, if you're trying to be something you're not, pause that and just retool and be yourself 100%. Yeah. Now, and I, and it's funny, uh, as, as someone who's messed that up more than once in his life, I, I, I can, 
I get exactly the feeling you're describing, that sense of ambition and hope. And, and you know, you picture your mind where you want to go. You're not quite there yet. And the temptation to mm -hmm. either overly assert. But I've also noticed a temptation in the other direction where people, uh, out of their fear of, gosh, I don't want to appear to be a fake until I make it, I'm going to I'm gonna dramatically lower the bar and, and just really um, – set this expectation of really I have nothing to offer and people mm, start believing humility that too. right well well it's false humility though I, I actually think it's I think it's just fear on display where if, if they if they knock themselves out of the game because they're not good enough right. uh, then they won't get beat out of the game later or so I don't know what it, I'm not a psychologist but I'm just I'm struck by both dynamics both the effort and I've again I've done both in both directions where I've either overstated or understated as opposed to getting comfortable in my own skin or anyone listening and so, so how does one, if someone's caught in one of those kinds of, you know, up front or behind positions yeah. and, and they say, you know what, what Frederick is saying is accurate and I want to be my own, I want to be comfortable in my own skin, but I'm just not. What are some things that you'd recommend that people do to remind themselves of who they actually are? That's awesome. That's a great question. I think, you know, and there's a couple ways to answer that. I think a lot of it. And if people are feeling that way, like you felt that way, I felt that way, mm -hmm. and which I presumably, if we're a sample size of two, that means a lot of people are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but my personally, um, you know, I don't think my upbringing is is remarkable in any way. You know, mm -hmm. suburban kid, you know, growing up in you know high school, all this stuff, um, and the you know just rewinding back to high school, I remember the pressures of trying to be something you're not and. Mm -hmm you know, trying to fit in and all that stuff. So I think at an early age, we're being molded That's and programmed right. to be something else. Like, okay, hey, you know, they're saying that this particular star is, those are the jeans to wear. So I got to wear those jeans if I want to get the girl, you know. Okay, I need to do this. I need to have this kind of car. I need to, you know, I need to comb my hair or cut my hair a certain way or else people are going to make fun of me, you know. Right. So we're, we're, we're sort of meld, we're molded at an early age to please people, right? right? And the overall goal is, okay, the underlying tone of everything I just said is, it's not for you, it is for other people, right? So fast forward to now. My mythical okay. people who actually don't even notice when my hair is out of place. No one even cares, yeah. <laughs> no one even cares, yeah. Like it's a, a segue there, I was walking through the mall with someone the other day and it, it was, it, I'm like a child of psychology. I like to watch people and sort of, you know, look and see what they're doing and why they're doing it. Sure. And, and she, like, in the car on the way to the mall, she's like normal, relaxed, you know, cool, even walking up to the mall. But when we passed through the threshold of the mall, when presumably there were a lot of people in there that might look at her, all the mannerisms changed. She was walking different, mm. you know, looking around, you know, she's visibly visibly cognizant of the fact that people might be looking at her when in fact no one was looking that's right <laughs> and that's that's what's going on in our lives you think everyone's looking at you right when no one really cares they care about what's going on with them hmm. so for photographers my advice would be do your own thing try to put blinders on and focus on what you want to be as a photographer what are your goals as, as a photographer hmm. and burn a hole in that you know hmm. it's like trying to burn a hole in a piece of paper with a magnifying glass you hmm. know Focus the sun's rays, and you get it just right. You'll burn a hole in it. Do I the same that. with your photography. Like, okay, I want to be the best headshot photographer there is on the planet. Surround yourself with that kind of information. Look at what Michael Hurley's doing. Peter Hurley, yeah. Peter Hurley, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peter Hurley's doing. Um, all these guys. Michael Greco, all yeah. these guys. Look at what they're all doing. Surround yourself with that kind of information. Inspire yourself and do that thing. And, you know, yes – solicit opinions from other people yeah. on your work to help you get better but don't let that drive what the overall you is right. you know Good it's, or bad. it's input yeah, yeah it's just input from the outside just feedback i love that man i, I love the burn a hole in it thing i think somebody needs to write a song on that because it's uh it it's poignant the idea of of bringing that kind of focus and attention i it, i was it's funny this past summer or, or spring i guess i was at um uh, South by Southwest, and I was hanging out with a bunch of developers, geek guy, coder guys, and they're some of my favorite people on the planet because they, they really are kind of running the world right now and um, hearing them talk about little things. But one thing this particular group of developers were is they were underdeveloped uh, socially. Uh, uh, they, they, they couldn't get the girl still. It's and ironic. <laughs> <laughs> Underdeveloper. But, okay, but what they... I, <laughs> 
But what's funny to me, and this is a long-winded preamble to a comment on your comment, is they told me about this thing online called The Game. And apparently it's some ebook or something that somebody wrote. Yeah, by I, Neil Strauss. Oh, yeah. there you go. I don't know. I didn't know anything about it. And they they start telling me about it, and they're like, yeah, it's basically a, a bunch of geeks sat around, and or one geek or someone dissected the how a couple can meet. And it's so funny. I'll recommend great photo books, and I'll try to sell my book all day long, whatever. No one will buy any of them. I'll say The Game. Someone right now at home is Googling The Game to go oh, get totally. this. Oh, totally. Yeah. And this guy's made a gazillion on this idea of helping people who can't get the girl get the girl and using all these techniques uh, to do that. And so funny, basically what you're describing is uh, it's 101 to actually become attractive. Don't care what other people are thinking. Uh, cre- keep such a focus on one thing that everyone's going like, why is he not caring about all the hubbub all about? Yep. And and you know they employ other things. But it's striking to me that an observant mind could sit back and go, that's what humans do all the time, everywhere, in every context. And what I'm hearing you say is, by the way, it works in your professional career, too. Totally, totally. You hit it right on the head. In fact, you know, here's another book. You know, if, if people want to read the game, I would suggest it. It's interesting. Is it really? You know, from, from a psychology standpoint, it's really interesting because he, he, Neil Strauss is a great writer. He used to write for Rolling Stone. Huh. But he, he writes in this sort of way that he's one of those books where you can't put it down. You're like, huh. okay, let me find out what happened next. You well, know? these guys were like, I don't want to throw these guys to the bus. I won't mention their names, but they were like, their, it was their Bible. Like, it was like this this like it, thing. You know, it's funny. It, it, when you get the book, I have the book. I bought it. And uh-huh. it, it looks like a Bible. <laughs> <laughs> it has the foil lined pages, the, the sort of faux leather cover well with marketed. the embossing on the, wow. on the front. It looks like a Bible. So if you were reading that book, say in Starbucks, somebody would assume you were reading the Bible. Wow. <laughs> you know, it's totally it. like that. <laughs> but it's interesting. That book, that book is, there's nothing new in that book. And like they say, there's nothing new under the sun. Sure. There's nothing new in that book. In fact, yeah, I would suggest getting that book if you want to read that sort of thing and just look at it from the standpoint of, of marketing and psychology because it's really smart in that respect. Mm-hmm. But most of the ideas from that book on how to approach women and all this crazy stuff come from another book called, um, I think it's called The Psychology of Influence by Dr. Robert Cialdini. Hmm. And that book, which will cost you like seven bucks or something, maybe even less if you get it as an ebook, mm-hmm. but that book goes over psychological triggers as they apply to marketing and human nature. For hmm. example, you know, things like, um, you know, you, you should read it. There's like maybe a dozen different, different what they call psychological triggers in there. One of them is... Oh, like anchors and those kinds of things? Kind of, yeah. But one of them is, is um, the principle of reciprocity, Okay. You know, which we hit all the time. When you right. read this book, you're going to be like, okay, I've been being marketed to my entire life and I had no idea. But the, one of them is called the principle of reciprocity. And you see that online all the time when sure. you... Like even on TWIP, like you're getting free stuff from TWIP. You know, This Week in Photo is a free podcast. It's something in your head is telling you that, hey, this is free. So if Frederick ever markets to me, I'll be more apt to buy something from him because I feel like I want to give something back, right? That's content marketing 101. I mean, totally. Yeah. yeah, you get the free ebook, you get the free whatever, right. and then somebody, you build a bond automatically and they feel like they want to give back to you if they've gotten some value from you. So it goes into things like that. Reciprocity, it goes into, uh, what's another one? Um, not, I, I call it herd mentality, but it's more of like a group thing where mm-hmm. if you see one person doing something or <clears throat> in other words like you see two restaurants on the street you know one of them has a line of people is going to take you an hour to get in and one of them only has no one you know it's like three people inside yeah even though restaurant b has better food doesn't matter you're going to go wait in that line yeah. because you assume people know more than you do especially a group of people so you go wait in the line even if the food is bad same things apply online and what with, the with way Twitter that followers yeah, the way that manifests online is like, okay, you know, come sign up for my digital class right now because I'm only allowing 30 people right. in and then the doors close. Right. You know, that that kind of thing. So, if you read that book, you will be armed with all these different techniques and it will change your life. It'll change the way you look at the way you're marketed to because you'll immediately recognize these different techniques. You're like, okay, that's reciprocity. Oh, that's this, you know. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And you'll be more armed to either deflect or accept things into your life. Well, okay. So uh, I, again, this is the richness of having a conversation with you, Frederick. Is there's there's a lot here. There's there's yeah. front, both, but uh, some of the common thread here is specifically this kind of again blend or merge of uh, your marketing experience 
with a real keen understanding of our particular photo vertical yeah. uh, from multiple genres, especially given all the conversations you've been a part of. Yeah. And one of the things that I know that you're passionate about is this idea of, of the starving artist actually becoming a viable business. And mm -hmm. some of the ideas and principles you're describing kind of, in my experience, fit hand in glove with what you're what, kind of what where I, I'd love to see some of this conversation go, um, even though we don't have a ton of time left. But I, I'd love to hear what are some of your thoughts on the folks that are home? And this is related to even people diminishing what their value could be in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, Give us some insights on is it even possible or because a lot of the a lot of the photographers I know, uh, especially the creative ones who, who don't who seem committed to never making money at this thing, they, they almost take pride in in like, yeah, I'm just I'm going to be penniless my whole life. and That's just the way it's going to be. And yep, yep. Um, say a little bit on that. Yeah, I you know, and I'll be brief. I think the romanticism behind the starving artist and hey, I do this really incredible stuff and Therefore, I have to eat ramen noodles, or uh -huh. you know, you know, take my bread and quarter it, and eat a quarter. It, you know, <laughs> right? Gonna, I think maybe that was true a while ago. You know, maybe back in the seventies or eighties, maybe in the Mad Men days or something. Mm -hmm. That was a while ago when there were only a few people or a few entities that held the keys to getting the word out about your product or service to a lot of people. Right. right. Today, barriers fall every single day. I mean. Mm -hmm. Barriers that you'd even know were falling are falling that are allowing you complete and unfettered access to millions of people to get your word out however you want. So yeah. I think that's having, that's having two effects. Is that the first effect is, you know, you, we, we've been talking about it for years, and it's democratization or balkanization of everything, right? Yeah. So now Joe Schmo, photographer who just started up, can be on equal footing with... Peter Hurley, who's yep. you know New York City, you know the mo one of the most sought after photographers in the world. So you, people can go to your websites equally at the same time, and they'll right. load at the same speed. So now with that, now that excuse falls away. So there is no excuse. Now you have to differentiate yourself. So if you a differentiate yourself, become like we were saying in the beginning, become the best of the best. Focus on what you want to do. Become mm -hmm. the best of the best. Distinguish yourself online. Then build a structured marketing plan around how to get the word out about yourself. Because remember, those barriers have fallen. We've got, we've got all these tools. You can talk to your clients like this on Skype, right? That's right. It doesn't cost you anything. I booked a wedding last week with someone. This is a great story. Someone actually got a name of someone else. Uh, who, no idea who I was, nothing, and was looking for that other person. Put the name in wrong. My name came up on a Google search. They came to my site. They're like, oh, I'm in the wrong place. They went to the other place's place. They're like, I don't like this guy's stuff much. Came back to me, contacted me. We couldn't meet in person. We had a Skype call, and then I booked the wedding. Love and it. And I shot their engagement last weekend. And, and their wedding's in a month. And I was just – the whole process was just surreal. It's surreal. Me. Yeah, it's surreal. I mean, even before, it was like, okay, there's Starbucks everywhere, so I can meet my clients in Starbucks, you know, which right. is okay. But now we have Skype and things like this. Even me, I mean, I've, I have office hours three times a week that I meet clients for consultations, very much like this. Right. You know? And we talk one on one about their goals, and I sort of inspire them and get them going on things. And that's all done online. Yeah. I just come into my home office and I sit down and we connect. You know, the payment happens online through PayPal. Right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it couldn't be easier. And this was not possible years ago. So to make well, a long I'm story short. It actually could be easier. It, like, and it will be easier. Yeah, it will be easier. That's I mean, so you striking. look at things like, like uh, what was it? Um, like WebEx. Is WebEx and their uh, go to meeting and go to webinar yeah. software, right? Yeah. Which is, if you look at their pricing table, it's expensive, it which sure means. Is. You got to be committed if you want to jump into that. You fast forward to today. Hello, Hangout. Hello, Hangout. We got Google Plus. I was talking with the founder of Google Plus yesterday. You know, the wow. guy who is in charge of that whole. They got some crazy stuff coming, Dane. I mean, and essentially what they've done, what Google has done overnight, you know, by Google putting their shoulder into it, yeah. has they've erased much of the business that WebEx had, right? So now you can start these, you can do a web, you can do a webinar. For unlimited people, I know. That's the thing. So, I mean, WebEx and it's live broadcasting. I like okay, it's so, live. Well, okay, yeah. so this was so funny to me. They just turned on my on air, and I know they're going to do that for everybody shortly if they haven't done it already. Yeah. But 
I couldn't believe, like I thought of like the old days of, you know, Justin TV and, and uh, Ustream and like you said, WebEx and all this kind of, and it was such a labor, like I just want to have conversations unfettered with all these people. Yep. And now all of a sudden, and then, and then it was like, what, 18 months ago when you two did that live broadcast on Google, maybe it was two years ago at Rose Bowl and it was like the biggest concert of all time and everyone was like, oh yep. my gosh, a live broadcast. I can do that now. You can do it right now. You right can do now, it from your I, MacBook Air if you want to. I do it almost. I do it almost every day. I'm on Google Plus more than I'm on Facebook because I do Hangouts so often now. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, just group conversations, or whatever, and it's so focused and and like you say, um, frictionless. Yeah, uh, it's easy. It's it's easy, and everyone can do it, and it just sort of makes the barriers of all that stuff fall away. You know, and now, but then Dane, it Dane like, can be sitting in his office doing a right. a group fast track photographer talk. I do, I do to, all the time. I don't. Yeah, to a I don't bunch have of people. Travel anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I did a talk. I did a talk uh, at um, in Malaysia. They actually had me come over. It was for uh, Creative Asia or something, and. And at the last minute, I'm like, I'm not sure I can pull it off. And uh, we got in a conversation like, no problem. Uh, we'll just pipe you in. So I literally sat at a desk and gave a talk like I'm giving you right now. And they put me on the big screen. And the speakers who were there in person were mad because they didn't get the big screens. <laughs> and all, my talk at high ratings, because, and I think it was largely because I had a bigger presence yeah. in the room, even though I wasn't in the room. And I took live Twitter Q&A. So it was like they were right there asking the question and it was better i mean i th i think it was better it, yeah i mean there's something to be said to be there in person you can shake is. hands and have a cup I, of coffee and all that actually, yeah yeah but but to get the message across to the to the broadest group of people of course you got to go this way well what's amazing to me too is um you know if it's available to everybody if i'm tracking the math on this mm -hmm. and now everybody can have a you know uh, an on air eventually or you know whatever everyone's gonna have access to these kinds of things sure and all these future things that are coming mm-hmm it's not enough to just have access to like if these walls are falling down and everyone can do it, that's mm -hmm. becomes the baseline then to get creative from. Yeah. A and I think that's what I'm so struck by. Like we did, it's, you and I both know Julianne Cost very well. And mm -hmm. Julianne and I were on recently. We're talking specifically about um, this, why instructors aren't nervous about telling people technique. Like why I would never be nervous about telling people about my microphone or how I set up a Google plus or whatever, yeah, because totally. that's not the hard work. Nope. The hard work is to actually have these conversations and to get the other person on the line and and to come say something that's somehow interesting. Yep. And and that's where I wish people would spend more energy. Like with their camera, it's not enough to depend on 200,000 ISO. It's not enough uh, to get a 1.285 millimeter lens. It's Once you got it, then what are you going to do with it? Because anybody it. can yep. get that lens now. Yep. Um, so, so in if that if we're in agreement, I think we are because we're both nodding like this. I am. I'm to totally. Yeah. What, what advice would you give somebody who wants to give up the starving artist life and really wants to get creative on top of these platforms that now everyone has ubiquitous access to? Yeah, it's funny. So the the the, the one thing that when you were talking that I was nodding that reminded me of uh, you remember the movie Inc The Incredibles? Of course, yes. You remember that the one. The one line that the villain, I forget what his name was, the, the crazy guy with the hair. Uh -huh. uh, Syndrome. The, yeah, Syndrome. So his, the one line he said in there, the reason that he, his, he was hatching his plan to make everyone a superhero was because when everyone is super, no one is. That's right. <laughs> so that was his old goal. When everyone's super, no one is. And that, well, that's, that, that's, that's digital right there. That, in it, heartbeat. that applies to digital. It applies yeah. to all this stuff. When everyone has unfettered access to all this technology and it's simple enough so that everyone can do it then you know it doesn't mean that no one is is super it just means that you as an individual like we were talking about in the beginning you as that individual that is building the brand of you that is building your particular style of photographer you're becoming the world's best ex photographer right now you have a platform to distinguish yourself on so what if everyone everyone has a car right that is most people have cars but that doesn't mean that everyone's a race car driver you know or everyone is a stunt car driver or everyone well, can but but it's not that's not really true because everyone is a race car driver everyone if i own a if I own a phone i am a, a photographer but right. so it's not but I know what people mean when they say that, but wouldn't it be more precise to say no? They are; they're just not incredible. Like I love right. that. Like when everyone's a hero, no one is a hero unless, yep. of course, they happen to be incredible at it. In yes. which case, in which case, they are incredible. Because it's not about being a superhero anymore. Yep. It's about being radically that that kind of focus the burn thing. Yeah. Uh, dude. Yep. 
We got to totally about this because so, this is yeah, important. <laughs> uh, it is important. No, you're totally right. You know, that, so a tip that, you know, you look, like a concrete tip that I would give photographers in order to sort of move in that direction of not starving, yeah. you know, A is eat, you know, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but beyond eating and the, the, you know, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs yeah. um, is to educate yourself on marketing. I think a mm. lot of photographers they they get sort of caught in that that vortex of okay I got to get more gear oh I got to take another yeah. workshop oh I need to you know I need that I need a better lens oh there's this book out okay now there's the conference I need to attend you know all this stuff so you get caught up in the world of learning about photography itself which I'm not knocking you know of course you need to know all that stuff right. but equally so if you're gonna make a business out of this the marketing side of it and getting the word out about your product or service is equally, if not more important. Because, Dane, you know, if there's a photographer who's mediocre and there's a photographer who's, <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> and there's a photographer who's crazy awesome, but the mediocre guy right. knows how to market himself, who's, who's going who's gonna to be eating steak and yeah. who's going to be eating ramen, right? Well, it, it's funny, and I'm totally in agreement. Like, I, 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 I don't see as, I, I see on a soulful level, I think the art and craft photography has to be primary. I think ultimately, if you make a big promise and you show up at the game and you can't pull off what you promised, that's yeah. going to have a worse ricochet than ever. Totally, totally. So, so yeah, so you have to be both, right? You, you have, have to be to remarkable. Be you not, it's not enough to just be remarkable and be that starving artist that, oh, he, hey, look at Johnny over there. He creates fantastic work. Let's go visit him. You know, he's starving in the corner in the studio, but let's go look at his work, you know? Right. You have to be remarkable aesthetically and remarkable. You have to be smart on the business side today mm -hmm. as well. You can't, mm -hmm. in the old days, you know, some art buyer would discover Johnny and he'd mm -hmm. become rich and he'd be doing gallery shows in his Armani suit and mm -hmm. success story. Today, no, that may happen, but now you have more control over what happens to you. Now you can get and the word out about yourself. That's yeah, right. more responsibility. So now you have to understand the business side of your business. Not only marketing, but once you get the money, what do you do with it? You know, how do you reinvest it into your business? There's all that stuff on that side, which may seem daunting, but it's not as daunting as it seems. Right. You need to know that stuff as much as you know how to, you know, open up a stop to get shallow depth of field. You know, you got to right. know all this stuff together. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Well, dude, this needs to be uh, part one of a, a couple conversations, whether it's on this show or I come on yours or whatever it is. Yep. Yo, we you're coming on. This dialogue going because, <laughs> honestly, I, it's funny. A lot of the the root things. I, these weren't my original ideas, but I talk about a lot of these ideas in Fast Track um, and business plan, and and uh, and they're they're ideas that people could see coming a long time before this moment. We're just living in that moment now, and in the living of it, we could rise above. The, the fray and not just go where all the herds are going and go, okay, well, well, how can I be distinguished? How could I be an incredible in the middle, in a, in a sea of superheroes? And, yeah, yeah. Um, and all these kind of intramural conversations about, oh, how bad it is or whatever. I, I don't know how constructive any of that is uh, when there's so much opportunity in front of us if someone's willing to get creative on top of these platforms. Totally, totally. Um, so I'd, lo I'd love to keep that conversation going. Uh, for folks who want to who track you online and that sort of thing, you're uh, at Frederick Van on the Twitter, is that right? Yep, yep. I mean, it just you can just Google Frederick Van as long as even if you misspell my name, it should come up right. <laughs> That's great. It's nice, it's nice to be in that position. Good Google will suggest my right name. So. <laughs> in fact, Google any word you want, and Frederick Van will come up front page. You know, yeah, just, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, it's my it, yeah. Frederick Van is the sort of the brand that I've built online, and we were talking before we went live. One of the reasons I did that is because of the SEO. Oh, it's you huge. Know, it's yeah. simple, you know. There's not many Frederick Vans out there, so I claimed it. So yeah, well, and I it. and I can relate to the same thing. It's me, Great Dane, and Dane Cook, and that's you know we got awesome. yeah. <laughs> we got page there one. There you go. There you um, go. But I, I think that there um, is a lot more to dialogue around this. But I and I do think you guys would be crazy not to take advantage of uh, this week in photography uh, and and all of the resources that come from that. They've been around for a long time, and there's some great guests that come in and out of that conversation. It's really a roundtable conversation that it's just the kind of dialogue with colleagues you want to be in and that's what this age affords us is we can actually have access in that level so be sure to tune in to, to twip uh and frederick thank you so much for all you're doing in the industry and uh and i do look forward to continuing this conversation offline and on so oh yeah thanks for thank being you. here man thank you i appreciate it Dave. oh well, one last thing for everyone at home uh if you're watching this uh, be sure to thank adorama for uh, providing underwriting for all this and i just found out if you are um 
I'm going to be uh, in New York this fall. I'll be speaking at Photo Plus, and I'll also just found out I'm going to be in Kansas City for After Dark. And if you want to get a discount on After Dark, use Dane, capital D A N E, as uh, your promo code to get in. It'll save you a couple bucks on the way in the door. So, cool. Thanks, everybody, and thanks again, Frederick. See you guys yeah, soon. All right. all right. Thanks, Dane. Bye.